Hi folks, welcome back to the 440 Automatic Engraving Machine Project. So we filmed part one of this back in July and there were some awesome feedback points. Uh, and the premise here is we make these clamps. It started as a way to show how much you can do in Fusion 360 with CAD and CAM and modeling and rendering and G-code and output. And I think it's just awesome. There's a link here to the whole series on that. Uh, and then we started selling them. So it's a way for you guys to support these videos. Uh, link in the video description to buy one of these, either as an assembled kit or we sell them as a parts kit now, which is really fun. You get to put it together, but it's a really high quality clamp and we take pride in it. Um, but what we need to do is efficiently engrave all of these. And we do the more in these in batches of about 600 uh, and these get laser cut now. It, I can't, we were, we plasma the first batch, but I can get them laser cut, which the key is all those little holes are lasered out, which saves me a lot of time from punching. And then they're powder coated, and so we want to engrave. And yes, I know you could laser them. I want to do it this way, because I think it looks really good. So this is where we left off the last video. There were two design feedback comments that I thought really stood out. There were a lot of great comments in general. One, the idea of using the fourth axis and laying it down on its side, and that becomes your rotary device, or your lazy Susan, as I like to call it. That's really smart because we've already got a fourth axis, you're already dealing with path pilot. It's, it's sort of the smart way to do it. It's not how I'm gonna do it because I, I kinda wanna intentionally hack this on my own. I can't tell you why, I just do. Um, the, the other comment that was phenomenal was get rid of the motor. Create a combination of G-code and holes in the plate so that your spindle would come over poked down with a tool, like a solid tool, into a hole, and then the, the XY motion of the table would follow the, I guess it would be the circumference of the uh, rotation around the pivot point. So you could use the XY motion of the Tormach to index your plate around. Now, depending on how many stations you have, you may need to have it sort of inchworm it over. In other words, it would move it a little bit, lift up, come back, and move it more. So it does get a little bit tricky because uh, you've got to kind of pick up and come back and, and rotate and so forth. Um, but that's a really smart idea. And so my approach to this is uh, I have some, I am not sure we're gonna get this done, at least right correctly on the first time. So rather than trying to tackle everything at once, I wanna do this. I've stared at this design for a while. We're gonna make two changes. There's no reason to have this whole large diameter platter. What we can do instead is just make it a, a leg. So we're gonna make that change in CAD right now. And then the other change I wanna make is we need a way to secure this piece in blue to the table. Because remember, it's gonna move with the table. So we're gonna add some little extenders here that should let us uh, clamp it into the T-slots. So let's actually just dive right in. So activate the base. This should be pretty easy. I'll hide the 440, and let's see here. I'll just add it right here. So let's just make these two inches, maybe. I'll dimension it off of here, eight inches. Click tangent, I'll make that tangent to that. Let's turn the 440 back on. So it doesn't, ooh, that's good, okay. Uh, it doesn't mm, too much matter. I can kind of move this thing in and out to have it fit. Um, let's see here if we adjust this to say five, six maybe. Okay, that looks actually pretty good. Um, let's do another one of those. I'll link it to this diameter. D129, I'll do horizontal vertical, and I'll do the dimension from here to here, six inches, turn my 440 back off, and let's do, I normally don't like doing, um, let's see, can we, if we extrude this, here yeah mm 
negative 0.25. I'm curious, I kind of don't want it to make a new body. It did. Negative 0.25. I don't know if I can do a join because their uh, body has to be all touching or tangential. Ah, it did. Apparently that point is enough. That's awesome because now I can do fill it, I hope. Oh, come on, really? There? I've never done this. I know there's another way I can fix that, I bet. No. We'll do it in the sketch then. No big deal. L for line. Actually, here, C for circle. Let's we'll have a one inch circle that will be tangent to here and here. Here. It's probably a, actually, maybe I'm doing this the hard way. Sketch, I never do sketch fillets. <laughs> maybe this is why. Yeah, I'm doing it my way. One inch, and that is, if I click it, it's D135. So I'll dimension these D135, 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 and tangent. Right click, edit that extrude, hold control, and add. Those four sections back in. Now I got some Mickey Mouse ears. And, oops, I meant to put circles in them. Point two five. Cool. So that should let me clamp that down. And we're gonna end up having to support the side back here with something um, external anyways. I think we're just gonna use a cart on wheels. Uh, it really should work. So here's what we're gonna do. We're, let's create the G-code to plaz this chunk out. And, oh, we gotta fix our ring. Okay, so I might wanna go back to a ring. So I think what I'm gonna do is add a parametric cut so that I can kind of undo this easily. So I'll do L for line here. Oh, actually, I'll do a rectangle now. Um, do a center rectangle. I'll come out to here. Tangent that to that. And then I'll do L for line across here. Oops, actually, I need to, of course, have it come back behind. Come back two inches and stop sketch. So now I can do B for extrude and I can cut away. All of that. And I can add some fillets. Cool, so that should work. So we'll cut this piece out, we'll mount it on the machine, I'll figure out what we're gonna do for the center bushing and how this thing rotates around, so that's important. And then we'll have this piece, we'll plaz it out as well. And let's just go see, I wanna feel how it rotates to get an idea, um, how does that part track, how does it drop in, think about the, how we're gonna, whether direct drive or gear pulley on the motor. Uh, I think I'll have a lot more confidence in direction. So uh, let's, I'll show you real quick the G-code. I will go to 
model cam, new setup, change it to water plasma, not 21 bodies. We'll just do, uh, we'll do this place to, plate to start with and click OK. I can hide everything except the ring. And let's reorient that setup so it makes sense. So I will say, select z-axis and x-axis. So z-axis is this. x-axis will be this. So now that's going to cut kind of like this. Um, I wish the view cube would let me go normal too in that air way. To the, oh sorry, water jet, been a while. Plasma. Oh, you know what? I think I have a template which has some of my settings. Right click, right from template. Shoot, I don't. Must be on another computer. Water jet, plasma. I gotta check my kerf um, and my speeds and fees. I don't have my book handy right now. So we'll do this, this, and this. Click OK. I was debating about using quarter inch for this big. Uh, piece here and I wanted to see how much it weighed and I didn't know how to do that but I figured it out go into model and if I pick it I can see that it's the base part expand it and expand bodies right click first you want to make sure your physical material is set correctly we did it as steel so if you now go to properties it in a silly manner tells you in uh, ounces but if I do 550 divided by 16, I can see that's 34 pounds. So I'll put it on the scale after we cut it to see if that actually should match out, uh, should match correctly. Uh, so we're going to cut two pieces. Let's go cut this little guy here, which I've already got the tool pass for. And this big guy, I just made a template now, which is great. So I'll do a new setup. Plasma. Stock, I'll do relative size. Box, doesn't really matter here. And no, not two bodies, just this guy. Centered, uh, I'm going to do bottom left, actually. So I'll say box pointer right here. Click OK. And I'll right click, create from template, quarter inch 45 amp plasma template. So that creates a contour. Well, all it really does, it's helpful though, stores my kerf, which I measured, and stores my feed rate. And on the torch mate here, we have to use computer compensation, not controller compensation. So all I've got to do is come in here and click one, two. That's all we're going to cut on the plasma. The center hole and these other guys will do offline or by hand. So we've got G-code. How's that? Woo. I guess it would say closer to 33, but that's pretty good. So this will live inside of there. We'll drill the holes to mount it in there. The real question is, how's it gonna work? I did a little bit uh, with a burr wheel on a flap disc just to clean out that inside pocket. That fits in there pretty nice. So this will pivot around here, rotate around. And when it gets to there, drop through in theory and come back around. And this will be the station where it's great. Is it going to work? Stick around, folks. Next video, we'll drill some holes, some bushings. Should be able to get it so it's quasi-functional. We'll see how she works. Thanks, folks. Take care. See you soon. Yeah.